In this video, we're going to publish our substance. So let's start here with our rock ground. We're going to run through our graphs and just make sure everything is set up. We're going to do a little bit of housekeeping here. So here I'm going to zoom in and uh, I'm going to check to see uh, what my uh, bit depth is. So here uh, I'm at 16 bit after I'm using these guys and I don't want to do that. Uh, so let's come over here to our base parameters and let's set this to absolute 8 bits and now we've demoted that down to 8 bit. So let's make sure that we're still good. So we're 8 bit here, uh, just moving down the line. So we're 16 bit here at this point. Uh, so what I'm going to do is at this grayscale conversion node, let's set this guy to absolute 8 bit. So here we're 8 bit, 8 bit. Again, just optimizing the substance uh, as we go through here. And I think we're going to be good to go. So I'm going to check my base color, and that's 8-bit. Now, when we take a look at our normal map here, this is showing that it's 8-bit. And we're going to want to make sure that we keep our normal map at actual 16-bit. So I want to keep my height and my normal map at 16-bit. So here's a closer look at the normal map. And you can see that since the normal map is being processed at 8-bit, we get a lot of quantization here within the normal. And when we actually view the render, you can see that here as well. So again, we just want to make sure that we have our normal maps uh, set to 16-bit. So where this normal map is being processed at 8-bit is actually here in my rocks. And in this particular graph, since I'm using a lot of these noises here, so I was trying to you know, process them as 8-bit. However, when I'm processing this height map here, uh, that's at 8 bit at this point, and I'm going to feed that here into the normal mapper. This is where the quantization is going to appear. So you want to make sure that you're actually feeding in 16 bit data into this. And so, yeah, like I was saying, I was trying to uh, optimize this, but in this particular case for this rock, we're really working with our height and normal map. So this particular graph really shouldn't be demoted down to 8-bit like this. And so here's the node where I'm actually controlling that. And so you can see my output format is set to 8. Let's change this to 16-bit. And so now this means that the normal map here is going to be processed at 16-bit. So now that we have this, let's jump back over to our rock ground and take a look at what the normal map result is. So here we'll just load the graph and We'll just zoom in to the normal map itself, and you can see now that quantization issue is gone, and it, the normal map is uh, a lot higher quality. Here again, let's zoom in on our actual material, and once again, you don't see that quantization issue anymore. So just keep in mind that we want to make sure that we set our normal map and our height map at 16-bit. So here for our rock ground, I'll just double click this here to go out to the root of the graph. And for my output size, I'm going to make sure I set this to be relative to parent so that uh, once we get this into our game engine, we can uh, change the size of the texture. So there's one more thing we need to do in our main rock ground graph. So again, this is going to be the material that's created inside of Unity. And here in Substance, we're utilizing this metal rough workflow. So we have our base color and we have a rough, but we actually don't have a metallic output. And that's okay because we don't really need that here for our Substance shader. However, as I discussed in chapter one, Unity uses a different implementation of this metallic workflow. So they use a metallic smoothness and they take the roughness and they place that into the alpha of the metallic map. So as I said, the Substance plugin is basically going to take this roughness and convert it into a smoothness, which is actually just a glossiness map. It's going to do that for us automatically, but we can't really utilize our roughness because we don't have a metallic output that the roughness can be packed into. So we just need to create ourselves a metallic output. So here I'm just going to do a search for output and uh, let's set our usage here to metallic. And I'll just set up my identifier and my label. And here is our label. Now, for the actual data, I'm just going to create a uniform color. And we'll set this to grayscale. And for the actual size here, we're going to set this to absolute. And we're going to take this all the way down to 16 by 16. Uh, because again, we don't really have any metallic information. We just need a map there so that we can uh, place our roughness uh, into the alpha channel. 
So what we're going to do here is uh, just connect this. Now, if I connect it as is, you can see that this uh, output is going to inherit the 16 by 16 pixels. So notice all my other maps are 256. My metallic is now 16 by 16 pixels, which means when the roughness gets packed in here, the roughness is essentially going to be 16 by 16, and that's not going to do us any good either. So what we're going to do here is just uh, select our connection, hit the space bar just real quick, throw a levels in. And here for uh, the output size, instead of this being uh, relative to input, we're going to set this to be relative to parent. So you can see that now gives us this 256. So our metallic output is going to be 256, but this uniform color, we're not going to waste any generation time uh, on just a complete black value. So that's why this is at 16 by 16. So this is all we actually have to do. Like I said, the Substance plugin is going to take care of all this automatically. We just need to make sure that we have that actual metallic output. And we can now take a look at these other graphs. Let's start by taking a look at the rocks graph. Now, this graph is actually just outputting height and normal. Uh, so we need this to all be 16-bit. It's set to relative to parent, so we're OK. Uh, let's take a look at our dirt ground and make sure uh, that this is OK. So here, if I take a look at my outputs, uh, my base color here is 8. Uh, my roughness is 8-bit. Uh, my normal map is processing at 16. My height is processing at 16. And here, my um, AO is processing at 8-bit. So here you can see that I have a lot of these grayscale noises here that, that uh, by default are going to be generating here at 16 bits. So you can see that here I'm utilizing the technique, well actually here on this node, I'm utilizing uh, that, that technique of changing that output format to demote this down to 8 bits. So since these grayscale textures here are just feeding all the way into my color and my roughness, that's okay to make sure that I do that. Now, in this area here, where I have these grayscale maps, as we covered in the previous video, are going to be uh, used to create the details for my normal map. You can see that right here, this entire node structure is all being processed at 16-bit because I'm going to be feeding that here into my normal mapper. So here, again, for this section, we're going to process that at 16-bit. Uh, here for our output size, already set to relative to parent, so we're good to go here. Uh, finally, our rock shape itself. This is going to be all 16-bit in a sense that uh, we're processing just our height map here. And if we take a look at our output size, it's set to be relative to parent. So now that I have everything set up, I can save my package. And with the package selected, I'm going to hit this Publish button. And here I'll save the SBSAR file here into the Substance, uh, demo, Substance for Unity demo project. So we'll save this here. Just replace what we have. And for our publish options, we're going to want to make sure that we have output size checked. This is going to allow us the allow us to have the ability to dynamically resize the substance once we're inside of Unity. And also, I'm going to make sure that I publish this random seed value. This means that for each substance material, I can just simply change the random seed and get a variation of all the procedural noises uh, that are driving uh, the creation of the material. So now that we have this set, I'll click OK, and Substance Designer is now going to publish this substance.